The Masonic Temple in Philadelphia was constructed in 1873. It has been called one of the great wonders of the Masonic world, adorned with some of the finest artifacts of Freemasonry and magnificent lodge rooms based on themes of the ancient architectural world. The Masonic Temple showcases the traditions and values of the Masonic fraternity. Prominent architect Brother James H. Windrum designed the Masonic Temple, and Brother George Herzog was designer and decorator for the majority of the interior. The main entrance on North Broad Street and the windows surrounding it are in the style of 11th and 12th century Norman churches with round arches and elaborate geometric and foliated ornamentation. The massive wooden outermost pocket doors are each 17 feet high, seven feet wide and six inches thick, and elaborately carved to match the surrounding stonework. Along the inner steps of the temple are two large bronze sphinxes. The grand foyer runs the full length of the building, from the entrance gate to the huge bronze doors of the Benjamin Franklin Room. It is decorated with Doric columns, the oldest, strongest, and simplest of the orders of Grecian architecture. Oil portraits of some of the right worshipful past Grand Masters are hung on these walls. The Grand Master is the elected leader of the Masonic fraternity, and he serves a two-year term. He is called right worshipful, meaning he is full of worship. On the underside of the grand staircase, artists painted the Pennsylvania State Arms, the Grand Lodge seal, and a roundel with two male figures representing the transmission of knowledge. The medallions around the landing display the seals of all the states and territories at the time. The hallway includes polished white Tennessee marble with egg and dart molding covering the cast iron balustrade under the banister. Cylindrical newels support spherical milk glass fixtures. Brother Herzog inserted a rectangular lay light resembling a glazed skylight and painted rustic scenes on the ceiling cove. He also designed the cove's partial balustrade with flaming urns and added painted ornamentation to the moldings. The Frederick James portrait is of Brother Stephen Gerard. The statues are Joseph A. Bailey's Charity on the left and Strength on the right. The stained glass window on the second floor was designed and made by Benjamin H. Shoemaker who also supplied the window and laylight glass. The wheel or rose at the top displays Masonic symbols. The all-seeing eye, the sun, the moon, Solomon's seal, Euclid's 47th proposition, the apron, the Grand Master's jewel, and a Bible with square and compasses. The central panel shows Moses and the burning bush. The bottom four panels represent the cardinal virtues, temperance, fortitude, prudence, and justice. The museum, founded in 1908, has one of the finest collections of Masonic treasures in the world, including Brother and President George Washington's Masonic apron. The museum's collection consists of more than 30,000 items. The library, founded in 1817, opened its doors in the Masonic Temple in May of 1890. It was a gentleman's reading room, where patrons could simply enjoy the daily newspapers. It holds 75,000 volumes, 30,000 documents and manuscripts, and features a circulating library established in 1952. Since 1998, the entire catalog of volumes and media has been available to eligible participants online. The Grand Banquet Hall is 94 feet long and 24 feet high, with four windows on the north wall and double doors on the west and south walls. It can hold up to 500 people. The architectural style is the same neoclassical as the corridors, staircases, and library with shallow wall arches and pilasters for wall articulation. Sixteen stop flute columns divide the room into three aisles. The pilaster and column capitals are adapted from the Corinthian with acanthus leaves, fruits, and birds. The ceiling is a trompe arbor of grapevines, and the floor is entirely mosaic tiles. A suite of rooms for the Grand Master's use includes a large reception or conference room, an anteroom, the Grand Master's private office, a small meeting room and a restroom. The reception room has a mosaic tile floor, a rug, marble baseboards, wood wainscoting with raised burled veneer panels, and a wooden classical entablature dividing the walls into upper and lower parts. The lower walls between the wainscoting and entablature are painted plain white, but the surfaces above are outlined in classically inspired faux mosaic bands. The ceiling is stenciled and divided into panels by plaster beams molded with a raised Greek key pattern. The doors and windows are topped by leaded glass transom lights. Two huge bronze doors, each weighing a ton, open to the Benjamin Franklin Room, which was originally a vestibule at the Juniper Street entrance. It was closed off from the main corridor to make a sitting room. 
With an unusually elaborate ceiling, this room is comfortably furnished for the members and their guests. Oil portraits of the living Right Worshipful Past Grand Masters decorate the walls. Eleven murals have also been painted far above the portraits. Except for the wood handrail, the central stair is completely cast iron by Robert Wood and Company of Philadelphia. The walls on the first and second floors, adorned with portraits of Right Worshipful Past Grand Masters, are painted and sprinkled to imitate light-colored granite. The closed outer strings have inset panels with raised vignette ornament. The octagonal newel posts on the first floor feature deep geometrical moldings. The electric lamps on the newel posts were installed in 1907. Oriental Hall fills the space originally intended for the main kitchen. It is for this reason that Oriental Hall breaks the customary rule that lodge rooms be at second floor level or higher. It was decorated in 1896 in the Moorish or Saracenic style. The colors and decorations were copied from the Alhambra in Granada, Spain, a 13th century castle. The ceiling is divided into 7,000 panels of various shapes, copied from the Hall of the Ambassadors. The border surrounding the ceiling is a pattern of the lotus flower, copied from the Salon of the Tribunals. The chandeliers are the original glass fixtures converted to electric in 1889. This is one of the first buildings in Philadelphia to have electric lights. Above the wall panels are a succession of small arches with a delicate embellishment of intricate lacy design. Ionic Hall was decorated in 1890 and takes its name from the style of architecture from Ionia, where King Ion reigned in Asia Minor. Ionians were mostly Greek immigrants. Refinement and elegance are characteristic of Ionic style. The walls are painted light blue, with panels containing full-length portraits of right worshipful past Grand Masters. The primary decorative features of the room are 24 Ionic columns set at regular intervals against the perimeter. The ceiling represents heaven, and in the center shines the noonday sun, surrounded by signs of the planets and stars. The signs of the zodiac were often used decoratively by operative masons of the Middle Ages in Europe. The clock on the west wall is one of the oldest in the temple. Made in 1874, it is still keeping time. Masons have always looked to Egypt, and its ceremonies of initiation and dogmas of religion imparted in symbolic forms with particular interest. Egyptian Hall was finished in 1889. Its architectural decoration is copied from a variety of ancient temples and tombs in the style of the Nile Valley. Twelve huge columns stand on the four sides of the room, surmounted by capitals peculiar to the temples of Luxor, Karnak, Philae, and others. The Worshipful Master's throne is gilded ebony and the pedestal is flanked by sphinxes. The ceiling is blue, indicative of the heavens. A solar disk is placed in the east. Representations of the major Egyptian gods are painted on the panels in the east. All the hieroglyphics are accurate copies from Egypt. The woman's face on the capitals is that of Hathor, goddess of wisdom and love. In Egyptian mythology, she was sometimes represented as a cow, which is why she has a face of a woman but the ears of a cow. The hall includes a bronze relief of Thomas R. Patton, former Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer. He was instrumental in Egyptian Hall's ornate detail and was also the benefactor of the Thomas Rankin Patton Masonic Institution for Boys, now home of the Pennsylvania Masonic Youth Foundation in Elizabethtown. The style of Norman Hall was first called Rhenish Romanesque instead of Norman, implying that its architectural features come from the 11th century Rhine River Valley. The hall, finished in 1891, includes round-headed arches as the primary stylistic motif. They crown the wall panels, recesses, and window openings lining the perimeter of the room, and they appear on the principal pieces of furniture. Brother Herzog and his assistants grained all the ceiling supports to look like wood, and painted hoods and columns to look like stone. On the panels around the room are six life-size male figures in medieval costume, each holding a working tool of Freemasonry, the plum, the trowel, the square, the mallet, and the compasses. The panels of the ceiling and the spaces between those on the walls are decorated with alternating patterns of involved ornamentation, like that found in ancient Irish or Scandinavian manuscripts. The clock on the west wall includes the letters, spelling out clockwise, B-A-Y-S-E, and counterclockwise, N-E-W-C-O-M-B. Basie Newcomb was Grand Master in 1821, and he is one of the few Grand Masters for whom there is no portrait in the building. Corinthian Hall is the largest ceremonial room in the temple, designed to seat 400 members at the quarterly and annual meetings of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania and to accommodate the meetings of the largest subordinate lodges. 
The room measures about 105 feet long and 52 feet high. Columns, festooned with flowers and leaves, frame elaborate frieze paintings. The hall was remodeled in 1903 into a more archaeologically correct simulation of an ancient Greek space, with motifs copied from several ancient models, including eight half-round caryatids in the east above the Grand Master's chair, inspired by those of the Erechtheum in Athens. On the frieze above them are the words Fiat Lux, or Let There Be Light, a motto in such perfect keeping with the Masonic symbolism of light as knowledge and the east as the source of light that it is embroidered on the Grand Master's apron. The stars and subdued lighting gives an atmosphere of an open hall in an ancient Greek temple. The rug, installed in 1963, was a gift from the Grand Lodge of Puerto Rico. There is a deliberate imperfection in its design. One of the corner leaves was left out to depict man's imperfection and to follow a Persian tradition that only God, or Allah, is perfect. Completed in 1908, Renaissance Hall is the second largest ceremonial room in the temple, designed to host the meetings of the Grand Holy Royal Arch Chapter of Pennsylvania and of subordinate chapters and lodges. The prevailing color of the room is scarlet, the symbolic color of the chapter. The hall measures about 77 feet long and 52 feet high. Brother Windrum designed it in an Italian Renaissance style. A painting of Joshua the High Priest hangs on the east wall, and on the west wall is St. John the Evangelist. The windows and huge lay light in the center of the ceiling include the Seal of Solomon, which evokes the sun in the midday sky. Just outside Renaissance Hall is a 12-foot lion's head fountain made of marble. Gothic Hall, completed in 1891, is also called the Asylum, Commandery, or the Commandery Room, named for the Knights Templar Commanderies, an appendant Masonic body. Because the Knight Templar degrees are based on stories from the Crusades, it became conventional in American Freemasonry to use the Gothic style in commandery spaces to evoke a romantic air of Christian chivalry. Gothic Hall is the only lodge room with its primary access running north and south, instead of the usual east and west orientation. It was designed to create a room large enough for the military displays, a central feature of Knights Templar work. Unlike other Masonic organizations, which require a belief in a supreme being, one must profess Christianity to be a Knights Templar. The cross and crown, emblem of the modern Knights Templar, hangs above the commander's throne, a replica of the Archbishop's throne in the Canterbury Cathedral. The Latin inscription around the emblem means, in this sign you will conquer. The pictures on the walls are of past grand commanders. The wainscoting is of oiled pine, and all the furniture is hand-carved. 